Hi, welcome to my garage here. Today we're going to work on the 69 uh, Chevrolet Camaro and we're going to upgrade it with the Autometer Envision Dash. Now before you start doing anything electrical on your car, you've heard it a hundred times before, disconnect the battery before you start working on it. Okay, we're going to start by loosening up the upper dash pad here so we can get access to the main cluster. To get this dash pad out, there's also studs that go in, and they have nuts on the back sides. So one back here, I can get through where this vent was, and then Justin here is going to remove the glove box liner so we can get access to go up that way to be able to get a socket wrench on the nuts to remove, so we can remove them off the studs and remove the dash pad. All right, we got various things to deal with now that we have the dash pad out of the way. We have an aftermarket stereo. I'm going to try to remove the cluster with the stereo attached. We're going to have to remove this screw up here for the heater controls. We've got screws up here for holding the, holding the cluster in. And then we're also going to have to deal with the light switch. I'll show you how to do that when we get to that point. So here we go. Got a screw there, and we got two screws underneath. You can see the heater controls are moving around now. One thing that's helpful is to keep all your screws organized as you take them apart so you remember where they go. Normally there's a couple of screws up here. There are no screws there, so someone's already removed those. We have this switch here that I think is also holding us up. This is a non-factory switch. Now the whole dash is loose. So our next step is going to be to remove the light switch. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to tackle this headlight switch. So we're going to pull it out so it's in the on position. We're going to pull this out. And right here you can see a spring-loaded button. You push that in, and that pulls out. Now what that does, that gives us access to this right here. So we're going to get a big wide screwdriver and we're going to unthread that and that dis disconnects our headlight switch from the panel. So now I'm just using this wide blade screwdriver. Don't lose that because that is part of your switch. You'll notice that there's this sheet metal bracket here. This actually is part of the ground system. Uh, that you will see later on. This typically is also related to your wiper switch. So keep track of this piece here that you can see that I'm moving around. Okay, what we're going to do here is we're going to lower the steering column to make getting this dash out easier. As I loosen this, you're going to see the steering column start to drop. We don't need to take the nuts all the way off. Just loosen them up. This whole thing drops. And now we have room to get our dash out once we finish unplugging things behind here. Also to note for the wiper switch, I just reached behind and simply unplugged the wiper switch. So 
you didn't see us actually removing the dash cluster out of here. Um, once we had everything removed, all the bolts around here, the headlight switch, this is the connector for the wiper switch. This was for the left side vent. And obviously we had the two studs that went through here that you saw me reaching behind for. Once we had all that and the lower screws out, we were able to wrestle this out. You could also see that we lowered the steering column here. You could see that I didn't take the nuts completely out. All I had to do is lower it. Now normally, we would have shown you disconnecting the speedometer cable and the factory instrument cluster connector. In this case, this already had an aftermarket dash, so we didn't have that. So what we had was just simply a couple of connectors that went to each side. So we simply brought the dash out, disconnected these, and we were free. This is the Autometer Envision 7008. It comes with an oil pressure sender, water temperature sender, the vision display itself with 12.3 inch digital display, an optional pad support. Some units uh, need the pad support, most do not. This is the upper column, column cover. And then it also comes with the lower column cover. And finally in the box, we have instructions and two fuse, inline fuses to protect the unit. All right, the original car had two LEDs and a switch that were aftermarket that we're gonna transfer over. I've already marked the locations on the back using a drill bit. Original dash, we're going to remove the left hand vent, right hand looking at the back. There's four screws here, and we're using quarter inch socket. Alright, so on the original dash, there's this little astro ventilation placard. On the back, there's 5 16 slip nuts. I'm going to take those off, and that transfers over to the new dash as well. So we're going to take the astro ventilation plaque that we took off the OEM dash and we're going to install it onto the new dash. Use the same uh, slip nuts that we took off. Should are snug but not over tightened. You take your original vent that we cleaned out, slide it right over top. Use your original sc screws. I'd go to the next diagonal just to make sure everything lines up right. Make sure you're not over tightening the screws, you are screwing into plastic. Nice and snug. Next, we're going to install the light switch. Now there's a light switch. Here is the grounding plate that we took off the original that uh, shown earlier by Corey. You have it screwed into the corner of the wiper switch here, and then it comes down here and the, the chassis screw will come through and ground it to the chassis. You have a knob here, make sure it lines up. Here's your original screw that we took off earlier. Push that through. Go ahead and get it started. Your fingers. Before you get it tight, make sure that not little notch is lined up. You can feel it lock in. A large uh, flat screwdriver also works. Like Corey showed when you removed it. Make 
Make the snug no rattling. Just take your knob. Turn it until it pushes in while pushing it gently. Push it until you click, and then you're all installed. Now you retain the OEM look. You have your wiper switch here and your light bulb. You can also see here we moved over the aftermarket uh, radio fixture. Okay, we are back inside of the car. We're at the wiring phase. So I've gone ahead and cleaned up some of the wiring on this. This did not have the factory instrument cluster connector because it had an aftermarket dash already. But I am using some of the factory cluster wires that I've found. Now we do outline in the instructions what your wire colors should be, but I'm going to demonstrate how to check them. So this pink is going to be key on power. So when I turn power on, you can see my test light is on, key off, test light is off. This light blue here is going to be left turn signal. And you can see it flashing here. And then we've got high beam indicator, so I'll turn the lights on. This is a light green. You can see my test light lit up. You can hear me click the dimmer switch on the floor. Over on this side, we have gray, which is the factory illumination. As I dial down the factory dimmer switch, you can see my test light goes dimmer. When I turn the lights off, it is off. For the battery power that we'll use for the autometer and vision, we're going to go straight to the fuse box and we're going to get battery power there. I could have used the factory grounds here, which I've sealed off. However, given the age of this car, uh, you don't want to trust those factory grounds. So we're either going to ground our new dash to the engine or to the chassis to ensure that we've got a nice, clean, fresh ground. And then also we're going to install some inline fuses in here to help protect the unit. All right, we're going to be installing the ground wire into the, the block of the engine. That's the best ground. First, we want to measure out. We pulled out the, the ground wire from the Envision dash through the firewall. We're going to go to a bolt that I've already pulled out back here. You want to make sure you got enough, enough wire with a little slack, but not enough to make it look... Get your shrink tubing. You can use a ring terminal. Slide over our shrink tubing. Use the lighter. Keep it moving. There we go. I'm going to wrap this down. these wires the bolt here the 
bolt wherever it went. Right, it's tight, but not too tight. Going into the aluminum head, you don't want to strip it out. Now we're going to go ahead and we're going to temporarily plug in our dash just to verify wiring. So we will go ahead, plug this in. I don't have to worry about latching it all the way because I'm going to take it back out for the final install where I get to plug in the headlight switch and wiper switch. So here we go. And we are live. So I'll go ahead and check the, what, the uh, turn signals. Everything looks great. I cannot check the lighting or the high beam indicator right now because our headlight switch over here is not plugged in. I'm confident that's going to be just fine. Okay, it's time to put this in. So one thing you're going to notice is these two tabs that stick out. You got to get these angled towards the narrow part of the column to get it over the column. Just like that. Now it's time to get this plugged in for the final time. Now we need to get this headlight switch plugged in. It's a little tight in here, just as it was when we took it apart. If you remember when we took this apart, we didn't undo the connector. We actually undid the whole light switch and let it fall out of the dash, but we did it the opposite this time because we wanted to make sure that ground bracket was in the right spot. Now we're going to try and get everything else to fall into place. Yes. This is where it's helpful to have an assistant sometimes. And there he has it. Okay, we're going to get a couple of screws started up here, and then I'll be laying under the dash making some of these aftermarket connections. All right, now we're going to install the column cover. There's an upper and lower column cover on this one. There's two tabs on both sides. Start by lining up to one side, pushing it in, and you might need a little bit of a flat screwdriver. Pop that down in there. It gets nice and lined up like that. These go over top. Take your bottom cover. It's also two little tabs. Lines up in the up top cover there.
because this Camaro here has an LS engine in it, it does not use the standard size fittings that we're used to with our small block and big block Chevys. So what I have here is Autometer's 2277 12 millimeter adapter, that's 12 by 1.5, and then a different sender, number 2259. The reason for the different sender is that it has a shorter probe to be able to come through this adapter here. If we were to make this adapter to accommodate the standard probe, it would actually be too thin and it would break easily. So we got to get this other one out. It's going to leak a little bit of coolant when I do this. So I've already got this put together. So I'm going to get down there, get that one out, and I'm going to do a quick switch. Okay, now all I gotta do is tighten that up. Okay, I'm gonna finish it off with a socket because there's just not enough room for me to get this big wrench in there. Now I notice I'm using a short handle ratchet that's because you don't want to put a whole lot of torque on this. It uses a copper crush ring to seal. So we just go snug until that ring is crushed and we're done. Okay, here we are actually removing the existing oil pressure sender from the previous gauges that were installed in this. You're looking down at the area just behind the headers down low on the left side of this LS engine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to replace that sender with the autometer sender that came with our Envision kit. Uh, that's a number 2242 oil pressure sender if you ever need a replacement. I'm also going to coat the threads in Teflon paste, not tape, before inst installation. And then as I'm tightening it down, we're just going to go snug and just a hair more. You're not trying to bottom out the threads. These are pipe threads, which are self-sealing threads. Okay, something to remember before you go and put the dash pad back on. All these clips right here that you see, as well as right over here, you need to transfer those from your old instrument cluster to the new one. That way you have something to put the screws into when you put the screws through that hold this under part of the dash pad. Also, we do ship this with an extension piece that comes out to support that part of the dash pad. It's really not needed as we found out. Uh, but if you want to put it in, you can. We're not going to. All right, welcome back. We're just on the final assembly of this. We're not showing you a whole lot when it comes to putting all this back together because it's really just reversal of taking it apart. So that's where we're at. Um, the dash is already secured into place. We've got all of our connections made underneath. We've got our steering column collars on. So we've fired this up after we changed out the sending units. Everything works. So we're going to continue putting this dash pad on. We'll put the glove box in, the vintage air, AC vent, and then we're going to take this thing for a ride and we're going to calibrate the speedometer.